Hello, everyone. This is Professor Kent. Today we are going to talk about Chapter 16, uh, but this is Part uh, 3 of the recording. In this recording, we are going to be taking up an example of convertible debt. When we think of a convertible debt, convertible debt can be converted into common shares or it can be converted into common shares. What else can be converted before we go forward? Con preferred shares can be converted into common shares. So the, the whole part of this example is the convertible debt. Um, how the convertible debt is converted into shares. If you have preferred share, they can also be converted into common shares. Now, the, the, we, when we are doing, when we're converting debt, there's the three, you have to journalize three times when, when we're dealing with convertible debt. Our first entry is done at the time you issue the debt. The second time, uh, the second entry is done when you convert, convert, convert there at the time of conversion. And then if you, if you don't convert it, you have to retire the debt or you have to pay, pay the debt off. So the transactions that are done at three times when you, with a convertible debt is at the time you issue a debt, at the time you convert a debt, at the time you retire a debt. We're going to be learning about it, how to journalize it at these three points. Now, when in, in this example, you guys learned convert, uh, you learned debt, but we're learning about convertible. Convertible is when it can be converted into shares. What happens if they are converted into shares? That's what um, is our next example is. The example is convertible debt. Um, bond corporation offer 3%, 6% convertible debt for a million dollars. So we know that in order to calculate the present value of the bond or any debt is you need a, a two interest rate. One is a coupon rate and then one is a uh, rate is a marker rate. Marker rate decides if the if pre the present value of the bond. Now, if you look at it now, in this one we are given two rates, and we're calculating the uh, we're calculating the bond, the present value of the bond at this point. When you calculate the present value, we learned that in chapter uh, 14 of your chap uh, 14, how to convert, um, how to calculate the 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 uh, the bond. Bond corporation offered three years six percent convertible debt for a million. So we know the uh, the uh, future value of the the face value of the bond is a million. We already know that. Your n, how many years you're going to have this bond for? Three years. And this six percent is your uh, coupon rate. So how do you calculate the coupon rate? You are you have a your face the face value of your bond is a million and we're going to pay 6% interest so your annual payment is 60,000 and your IY is your marker rate marker rate is a 9% you're going to compute your present value which will give you 924061 so we know that the present value of the bond is Nine nine hundred twenty four thousand and sixty one. The face value of the bond is a million. Difference between those two will give us a discount. In this case, we have a discount. But if you pay, if the present value is more than, it will be a premium bond. So in this case, it's a discount. Now, when you, the only difference in this one is there. There's another extra uh, extra information here uh, that we needed to uh, journalize. They think. Each thousand bond convertible to 250 common shares at the market price is three. So what there the question is saying is if you issue one million bond, each thousand bond can be converted into shares. Now when it can be converted into shares, then you have to look at it, um, the value of your equity. So that's what uh, we are uh, learning in this. The question is saying what portion of the proceeds, so we so we 
offered three years, 6% convertible bond for 1 million. So we know the proceed will be a million. The, the, and the, then the question is saying, and what portion is belongs to bond and what portion belongs to equity? Now we know that we measured the bond, which we know the bond is measured in the market. The value of the bond is 924061. If that's the value of the bond, the present value, the equity portion in this case will be 75939. It's a coincidence, they both are same. The discount portion is same as our equity portion, but don't get confused with it. When you calculate, when you when you compare when you calculating your discount or a premium you always calculate on the face value difference between the face value and the present value of the bond so there the question was asking what what portion of the proceeds are allocated to bond liabilities so the present value will be allocated to the bond the leftover will go to your equity which is in this case as a 75,939. That's under IFRS. Under SB, if we got a million dollar of the bond, they make it easy. The 100% will go because we don't have an equity when it, it comes to, um, we do have an equity, but our shares are not are um, listed in the market so the equity portion will be zero so the hundred percent will go to your bond but SP can also follow this this route uh, they can calculate the if they want to they can calculate the present value the same way and they can have an equity portion but most uh, um, most companies will make it easy they don't want to uh, make things complicated so then the hundred percent will go to your bond so that was the first part, but that it doesn't end here. So now the next part of next part of the question is how do we record them? Now we know that we calculate the present value of the bond is nine nine thousand two hundred uh, two hundred forty thousand and sixty one dollars. So how do we journalize it under IFRS and how we journalize it under SB? Now I don't have to show you again, but I will. Uh, the future value we know that is a million. Your N is equal to three, your I, Y is equal to your 9%. Your payment is 60,000. You're gonna compute your present value of the bond, which is 924061. So we said that the cash the company is receiving is a million dollar. We know the value of the bond is 924, which is the present value of the bond. And then the, the portion that belongs to, like we said that under IF, IFRS, the equity portion is 75,939. So let's record that. The account is called is contributed surplus conversion right. Means it there's a conversion right, means it can be converted into uh, shares that this debt can be converted into shares. What is advantage if the if the uh, for the investor and for the company? For the company, they have to no longer pay them the interest, and from the investor point of view, they get uh, they get a piece of the pie. Means they get uh, they get to share the dividends. Now, under the ISP, at the time of the issuance, you have a cash of a million and you have a bond payable of a million. But they can also do what the I if they can also do what the IFRS does. Then if the entry will be, so they have a two choices. They can have a same entry as IFRS or they can make their life easier when they are calculating um, the bond. So those are the, the option is available to SB users. Now, like I said that we journalize it three times at the time of the issue, at the time you convert it or a conversion, 
now this is my second part is saying that reporting at the time of conversion so if this is the bond how do we record it at conversion now if you look at it this is given a book value method Con for conversion um i'm going to do it here when you convert a bond into shares there's two methods there's a the book value method value method and there is a residual value method we are going to be learning about both of them residual value method it's just a one difference it's not a big difference between the both methods but we will be learning about it Now, in, in the first example, we are going to be dealing with the book value method, and the second, and later on, we're going to be using, we'll be learning about the uh, residual value method. So, in this case, what the question is saying, the bond, the bond discount will be partially amortized at this point. Assume the unamortization is of the bond is fourteen thousand fifty-eight. Um, the question is saying, journalize it using the book value method. If the book value method is used, first we have to find out the carrying value of our bond. If you look at it, we there's two ways of calculating. I'm going to show you both ways. The first way of doing is we know the present value of the bond we started off with. We started with this carrying value. Now, our face value of our bond was a million. We know that our discount portion was same as our equity so this was my discount so this was carrying value and this was my face value of the bond so if my discount was 75,939 now there there was some bond was amortized and some was unamortized so from here 14,058 bond was unamortized unamortized and then the difference between the and the rest was amortized how much amortized was 61881 so difference from this was my total discount 14000 was unamortized and amortized amount was 61881 so if you were to um, calculate the carrying amount of the bond there's the you take the carrying amount that we started off with, you're going to add the amortized amount, which is going to be 61881. That, that's the amortized amount. Give you a carrying amount that is sitting at this point, which will be 9854942. Or you can do an easy way. We know the face value of the bond was a million. You're going to take away the unamortized amount, gives you 985,942. So you could, you have a choice of doing it both ways. So we know the carrying value of the bond is bond payable. If they converted it, we have to take it out of the books. So that's what we will take it out. Then we're at the time of the, at the time of the issuance, we have a, contributor surplus conversion right so we have to get rid of that so if they could be uh, they could be converting the partial bond or they could be converting the whole 100 percent in this case it's uh, they're amortized uh, they're uh, converting the 100 percent of the bond and then we have a contributed surplus conversion rights so in this case it will be your uh, uh, 75 939 and then we have a uh, uh, co common shares which will be 1061881 so so this is uh, now in order for the company to um, under for SP they could if they follow the cash and the bond payable and they did not have the uh, contributor surplus portion of it they in order for them to use the book value method they had to follow the ifrs uh, recording at the time of the issuance in order to uh, 
journalize it under the book value method. The entry is same uh, under the both SB and IFRS, but if they have they follow, um, I'm going to change the color of so we know. So if they if the SB follows this, then they will have the same entry as the IFRS. Um, so that's what um, they will, in the question, they will tell you the, the, the company is using book value method and they have the portion um, assigned to the contributor surplus. Now we said that we're going to be doing journal entry at three times. At the time you issue it, we learned how to do an entry. At the time you convert, we learned how to do it. And if they don't convert, they can also retire the bond. If they retire the bond means it's just a, um, you could have a loss or you could have a gain. So let's see how we could uh, do a journalize. How do we journalize it if the uh, at the time of the retirement? Now the question has changed a little bit, saying that assume the bond corporation decide to retire the convertible debt. So you just, and you don't want to con you don't want to get the um, the the right to convert it. You want to retire the bond and then convert the debt early and offer the bondholder 1,070,000 cash at the time. The carrying amount of the debt was 972,476 and the fair value of the bond at the time of the conversion, at the time of the, um, at the time of the conversion means at the time of the retirement. At the time of the retirement, it was 981. So in our books, the bond is sitting at 972,476. That's the carrying amount in our books. And the value, the fair value of that bond is 462. So now we know the value is more. So different between those two, we are going to have some type of a loss. In this case, it will be uh, 8986. And how do we journalize it? If they don't convert it so now we needed to look, then we go back to the first entry what was our first entry at the time we did the issue we had a cash which was a million we had a bond payable which was 924061 and we have a contributed surplus conversion rights rights which was 75,939. So when we do a retirement, there's no conversion happen. We are retiring the bond. So how do we journalize it under IFRS and how we journalize it under SB? So now from we paid cash. So let's say the cash is paid is, so that's what the entry is. Now we know that what else is happening? We have a bond payable. In our books, the bond value of the bond is the carrying amount. So that will be 972,476. If we are we are retiring the bond, this, they have no right, no more, no longer have the right to our share. So that needed to be taken out. Contributor surplus conversion rights of 75,939. Now, what happens, the, what else do we do? Then we have a loss on redemption, which will be your difference between those two, which will be 2585. This is how we do an entry under IFRS. If it was a if you look at it, if it's an SB and they did this entry, um, the entry that uh, we are recording here, if they did this entry, what would they do different? So we have a bond payable, 972,476. We have a cash that will be the same. We need to get rid of the contributor surplus conversion right, same entry. 75,939 contributor surplus conversion rights. Under here, the difference between what we needed to know under the SP, they record the loss separately. So loss on redemption 
of bond is 8.986 and then we have our retained earning for the difference 2.599 retained earning for the other difference so this is the entry they would do so let's if they don't retire now they get like we said that I keep saying that um, there's three times we do the journalize we journalize the debt transaction at the time of the issuance at the time of conversion at the time of the retirement if they can if they convert it they're not going to be having any retirement because you already converted the bond into a debt now this is this this question was using the um, we learned the question using the book value method now the the second part uh, the second method that the company can use is a, a residual value method so we're going to learn how to convert under using a residual value method so i i try to make it a little bit easy they are saying that at the at the time of conversion we need the company uses a residual value value method instead of the book value method so now the under the IFRS is pretty very simple. What the IFRS does is the premium that we paid in, in, in your book is saying that we are paying extra to for them to convert. Why do we pay an extra? Because we don't want we want them to convert and they don't they didn't, the bondholder did not want it to convert. So we paid them extra to so they uh, so they they convert. So there's the question they went under it's pretty simple under IFRS any cash premium you paid is recorded as a law loss on a redemption so any cash premium we pay means any cash additional cash we pay is automatically recorded to the cash premium so let's uh, let's do that entry first before we get, go to the sp sp is a little bit different but let's do the easy one first and then we go to our uh, the little bit harder one so we have a bond payable that's the carrying value of the bond 972 476 and we know contributed surplus that was their contributor surplus conversion rights which is 75939 if i add those two it's my cash is 10415 then we paid cash this is common shares so we paid 15000 cash so now under the under the IFRS what happens is you have the whole amount is going to loss on redemption of bond which is going to be your uh, 15 thousand and then your entry balance under SP is a little bit different but not a too much different so <coughs> what we have to do is we have to record it um, in a if you do it in a in a steps then it makes it easy the first thing we had to do is calculate the gain or a loss on a redemption of a bond how do we calculate it this is we calculate what is the carrying value of the bond and the fair value of the bond the fair value of the bond is 981.462 and the carrying value is 972.476 so the difference between those two is your loss which is 8986 so we know we have a bond payable 972476 we have a loss on a redemption of a bond which is going to be 8986 then what else we have then we can the whatever extra we paid it has to uh, go to retained earning so we know the cash premium that we paid was fifteen thousand. Out of the fifteen thousand, eight thousand nine hundred eighty-six goes to the loss on redemption. The rest goes to retained earning. 
So the retained earning will be 6014. Then we have to record your common shares, which is going to be 415. And then, of course, we paid, which is a cash of 15,000. So if the company was using a residual value method, um, they have to, this is the way to record the transactions. Uh, I recommend uh, going to the PowerPoint, reading the um, reading the book, and going through the examples. If you have any questions, uh, please feel free to send me an email or post it in the discussion board. That way, um, other students can reply to your message. Thank you for listening, and uh, hope to see you soon.